so we've got these sarissas um, root over rock and I've got two large ones that are for exposed roots and then of course I have this trident maple here um, and we're gonna try shooting this from a couple of perspectives so I'll be babbling and talking backward and such but with this trident maple here I um, actually took this off of a um, root over rock design that I had and I ended up not liking it very well so um, I disassembled it and this was the first part I took off and this trunk is kind of in that Z configuration and I've got that branch system right there going out this is going to be the extending um, trunk line so right now the branches are tender and um, so I've got it lightly wired and I reposition it probably every two or three days but there's nice movement in the trunk there's uh, pretty nice nabari um, already I see I lost some of the surface roots so oops a bug was eating me up and I lost my viewfinder but anyway nice movement in that trunk and again for me this is one of the type of tree trees that um, can be viewed from either side so this will have to I mean I look at it one day and I like looking at it from one direction then I see some good movement in the other side but this is perhaps the most natural side to view it from extending this branch out like that so I, I need to put more wire on that and um, continue that trunk line and th this right here is the stump and um, I'll see whether or not I end up planting this back in the ground once I get these uh, the branch selection done this year and continue to uh, let this grow and then trim that stump out right here to um, let it form up with the new apex growth but um, this is like I said the more natural uh, view in other words my eyes are more inclined to look at it this way and um, but yet at the same time when I look at it from a style point uh, seeing it that direction also uh, makes me wonder and um, I take a different look but again when I look at it from this direction the base of the trunk is basically pointing more toward the foreground than this direction see that's on a I guess you can say a horizontal plane or a lateral plane from the viewer whereas to get a peel out of this the base of the trunk is coming toward the viewer a little more but the total picture to me is uh, pretty striking and um, we can see back here there's wound care that needs to be done the callus is rolling over and um, that's the initial cut when it was separated from the root over rock configuration then over here we have the sarissa snow rose whatever you like to call it uh, um, it's a root over rock and it has a real nice root co configuration over the rock and of course this is probably three or four years on the rock the cutting itself I can't tell you how long I've had it 
because I have so many of them and they're different uh, ages. Um, but one thing I do say, I only count the age of a plant from the time that it's on its own roots, whether it's an air layer or cutting. Just because I took it off of a tree that's 50 years old or 30 years old, I don't call that cutting a 30 year old cutting. Even if it's an air layer, I don't call it that. Once it's on its own roots, that's when the age starts. Now I might identify it as having come from a more aged uh, plant and then I attach that along with the age of it being on its own roots but so the um, sarissa here if you didn't know in order to grow this nicely I just had a real heavy bloom season it has to be cut back oh a hummingbird just flew in here through this area um, you have to trim it and cut it back a little bit it'll branch out and thicken up and then you get a lot more profuse flowering I just trimmed this back as a matter of fact I deadheaded some um, the other day and um, so it's doing pretty good and just like all of my plants here after our weather storm the other day I used fresh rainwater and water soluble fertilizer and everything got a good drenching and uh, fertilizing afterward but um, again root over rock and that's the appeal so you might ask well why do you have that snaky top on it and this and that because I really don't care um, when I wired it I'd intended on just using this portion right here and that was going to come off but when I unwired it this year and um, whatever it's like well if I sell it the new owner can uh, make their decision plus it will give them virtually a new plant that they can almost immediately um, well that's uh, three to six weeks of rooting they'll have a whole new plant and um, they can stick that on a rock or make a separate planting and then you can see this part can be elevated to give a new apex and um, there you have it but that's a nice planting uh, that's just a flower a florist bowl for a flower arrangement that I drilled nothing complex nothing complicated but it works now here we have exposed root sarissa just like this snow rose um, this is the double flowered um, sarissa and what I'm going to do now is elevate this in the pot to um, expose more of the roots. This I actually braided just to give some character to the affair and um, maybe see that and that's just to see what I could come up with It's too long and too large for me to turn it all the way around. I slap the black background or the plant next to it. But anyway, I'm going to pull that out of the pot here in a minute and see what I've got. And this one, just as the other, but I've left the, um, the I guess you can say the branches uh, loose, nothing spectacular. And um, you can see. That's a nice, big, thick setup right there. The wind's blowing pretty heavily right now. And um, so we'll see how this goes. And of course, this can be placed 
um, like a root over rock configuration or just a standard exposed root and um, all of this can be cuttings that can be worked with uh, at some point but one way or the other I'll come up with a configuration and um, at least one of these I'll um, do some styling on. I don't have a proper pot to put either one of these in. I'd like to have it in a deep pot similar to what I have here or you know square or or round or whatever. I've got one pot but it's too small and and the other um, proper bonsai pots are just too small. Um, but anyway I don't have a pot that I care to put these in and um, so we're going to go from there and see what happens. Hey there, y'all. So talking to two cameras here and so that is a trident maple that is being regrown you can see the nabari it's coming along pretty well but over time this will be a nice little shoheen tree and uh, let's see here I'll take this and elevate it and if the roots have uh, massed and um, have firmed up then I'll uh, extend the plant in the pot but if not then not really a very nice odor not as bad as marigold but Sarissa vomitoria <laughs> Lots of roots. Plenty of roots. This is really nice. I like that. Like that base of the roots very much.
and too bad I don't have a nice rock but I would place that on I'd have branches coming this way and these would be worked like that but that's that's the way it is um, uh, well anyway I'm gonna figure out something here because This is too nice to let it go, and I'm thinking, even if I were to take this pot and turn it over, I could put that on top of that, just like it were uh, was a rock, but I'll figure something out. So now, at this point, I'm going to elevate this a little more. And what I'm going to do here also is now I put that in there. I elevate this so these roots can, um, I guess you can say they can lignify, they could uh, be exposed to the environment, and that way they'll um, toughen up, thicken up, and um, we can go from there. But at this point, I'm okay with as much as I've done. This is reused soil, bonsai soil. And now, you say, well, so you put uh, the stick in there, but it's going to ride up and down on the um, stick. And I would say that you're very correct about that, but... Now, there we go. So, now that's stable. See? I've got a few more inches on that. This can grow and harden off. And that's going to be pretty much the same. But, this I grew right here. Uh, from cuttings, uh, as a matter of fact, and I may have said it before, I had uh, the original plants uh, that I bought through a broker that imported them some, oh, nearly 30 years ago now. And um, I planted some of this in the ground in the back and just forgot about it because it was always going to be my supply, my backup. And um, one day I was in the back cleaning up 
and I saw this and um, some of the pink and so I took cuttings and made pretty much all I need so everywhere you go around here now there's sarissas single flowers with double flowers and um, of course the pink um, at my bonsai club someone had a different variety of sarissa the leaves were um, narrow more elongated and so I took cuttings of that and right now I'm still increasing the amounts and I looked and looked and looked I've not found any like it and um, it's a single white flower and um, it blushes out pink the bud is light pink the flower itself has the very light tinge or blush of pink but it presents as white when the um, flower opens up not when the flower is old even you know just after it opens up it looks more white than pink so I've never seen that before never seen a sample of it anywhere online at nurseries wherever I may have been but that's that so sarissas they're pretty easy pretty nice you can get a nice configuration out of it nice planting um, I've got some I should have brought some back that um, I simply have um, wired to make a demonstration but I didn't do that so I'll hang on like I said they're all around this is pink the, the leaves are variegated this is a heavier variegated plant and I've got this fully wired and this is a pink also oops I take that back is a white and it's a single flowered white and I'm growing that with exposed root or it could be used as a root over rock and this is a double flower uh, white exposed root lots of curve and taper in it and this is the this is the sarissa that I was speaking of with the elongated flower it blushes pink but is uh, presents white when it um, blooms the leaves um, they'll get a little larger than this um, I just repotted this not too long ago so and I trimmed up the base of it and um, I'm just letting this grow into a larger plant right now but Sarissa <coughs> lots of them different varieties and um, they're easy to grow um, they're versatile you can do a, uh, a good amount of things with them including groups I've done a nice little group before and a little mame uh, configuration and I think I had about 11 or 12 little starters in there and with the I guess the, the trunks were possibly up to a half inch um, down to like a quarter inch or whatever but nice little configuration so you can do different things with the uh, Sarissa well anyway that's it for right now and um, I hope that's giving you some insight in what you can do with Sarissa so alright thanks bye